Hello everyone, with the Jamaica here, welcome to this updated video on weather across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. It is Sunday evening, September 8, 2024. Now before we jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video. I'd really appreciate it if you guys get this video up to 100 likes. If you don't know by now, that's how the YouTube algorithm works. We all like the video and then the YouTube algorithm pushes the video out to more persons who are in the path of these tropical systems that we can keep everyone safe especially during the peak of Atlantic hurricane season, that's August through to October. Share this video with your friends, your co-workers, your relatives, and even your church brethren. And subscribe if you haven't yet done so. Leave a comment down below letting me know what the that has been like in your year recently. Also, feel free to ask any other related question that you might have about the future of the in your specific area. Alright, so let us take a look at what's happening on the u.s national hurricane center seven day graphical tropical weather outlook we can see that they still have those two areas highlighted across the main development region for a possible tropical cyclone development within the next seven days and they now have potential tropical cyclone number six across the southwestern gulf of mexico we know that a potential tropical storm is basically the same as a strong tropical wave. We know the order of these systems. Tropical waves become tropical depression, then tropical storms, then hurricanes, then major hurricanes. Right now it is still a strong tropical wave. Hasn't become a tropical depression as yet. The only reason why it's a potential tropical cyclone is because they'd like to issue advisories on the system because the system has a potential to threaten land and we can see the path that is going to be taking it's definitely expected to become a tropical storm shortly as it moves northward along the mexico and texas coastline possibly heading up to louisiana then eventually mississippi who knows either way as of right now it is packing maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour don't know why they haven't upgraded it to a tropical storm as yet they have their reasons maybe it doesn't have an air of low pressure or maybe it doesn't have enough convection around the center either way it is moving northwestward at five miles per hour and we can see the tropical storm force winds extending out more so towards the north and west of the system in the brownish goldish colors and they've also issued a tropical storm watch right there along the northeastern mexican coastline as we can see it's expected to become an s as we head into monday tuesday wednesday we know the s stands for tropical storm then an h which is hurricane status as it heads towards the border of texas and louisiana then we can see it becoming a d back to a tropical depression as it heads inland we know these systems go the more they interact with land the weaker they become and if we take a look back at the infrared satellite images, we can see the clouds associated with them. Look at all the deep convection, the yellows, oranges, reds, lots of shower and thunderstorm activity. Definitely lashing portions of the Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico in general. And we can see the frontal system right there to the north of the system, spilling into portions of Florida, which are amount of cloud showers and thunderstorms still. If we go back to the other systems now, we see that one here, the one closer to the Caribbean, has a 70% chance, that's a high chance of cyclone formation within the next 7 days. And the other one to the east of that one has a 50% chance of cyclone formation within the next 7 days. And if we take a look at the visible satellite images of the Atlantic, we can make out these systems. <coughs> this is the one that has the high chance of development, and this is the one to the east of it that has a medium chance of development. And if we take a look back at what the Hurricane Center is stating, they've stated here, showers and thunderstorms associated, <coughs> let's get this closer, showers and thunderstorms associated with an air of low pressure over the central tropical Atlantic have changed little in organization since earlier today. Environmental conditions appear conducive for additional development during the next couple of days, and a tropical depression is likely to form during that time while the system meanders over the central tropical Atlantic. By the middle of the week, the system should begin moving more westward at around 10 miles per hour. And we see that they've given it a 60% chance of cyclone formation within the next 48 hours, that's the next two days. 
and a 70% chance of cyclone formation within the next seven days. As it's related to the other system to the east of there, they've stated a trough of low pressure located several hundred miles west southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. And for reference, we see the Cabo Verde Islands right here. It's producing a broad air of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. This system is expected to move little during the next couple of days until it potentially interacts with a tropical wave that is forecast to move off the west coast of Africa on Monday. Environmental conditions thereafter are expected to be favorable for gradual development of this system and a depression could form during the middle or latter part of the week while the system begins moving slowly west northwestward. And we see that they've given it a 0% chance of cyclone formation within the next 48 hours, that's the next 2 days, and a 50% chance of cyclone formation within the next 7 days. And we're going to be looking at what this Euro and the GFS supercomputer models are showing regarding these systems. We're going to be focusing our attention right here at the top. We're just going to be going out to the next one, just 68 hours, just like what the Hurricane Center would do. And we're going to be focusing our attention on the entirety of the map in general the main development region right here the caribbean is right here so the system should be or the system should be going somewhere in this direction not entering the caribbean doesn't seem like it and we can also see the system right here across the southwestern gulf of mexico let's see exactly what unfolds all right so as we go out in time to the next one just 68 hours on the euro model we see that the system across the gulf of mexico definitely trying to you know get its act together we see the isobar surrounding the airflow pressure we see the dark greens we see the yellows that represent all the way up to five or up to six inches of a rainfall as we continue to go out in time we see it continuing to move northward by the texas coastline and heading into louisiana right there as a stronger system a hurricane as the pressure is dropping the isobars are tightening we see that it definitely heads inland for sure but as we go out in time we see that we don't see much happening regarding the systems we start to see it coming into play right here this is one of the systems not sure which one it is but we see that by the end of the one just 68 or something coming in to frame right there to the northeast of the caribbean let us see what the gfs model is showing regarding the systems so as we go out in time, just like what the euro is showing, tightening up and strengthening as it heads north, northeastward into Louisiana. And regarding the first system, this didn't show up on the euro at all. We're starting to see it coming in. We see it right there to the east of the Leeward Islands. And then right there passing to the north of the Leeward Islands by 150 hours out this is a zero z on sunday which is actually 7 p.m on saturday september 15. we see that it misses the caribbean in general so at the end of the 168 hours we definitely see the difference on sunday the euro has the system more towards the northeast or it could be this system right here with the moisture but possibly weaker on the euro gfs has maybe a stronger system right there to the north of the car the eastern caribbean that is we'll see exactly what unfolds and i'll definitely be here to keep you posted with what happens we know these models are always continuously changing which is why we always have to stay updated if we take a look here at the surface map of the atlantic for this evening we can see the frontal system right here of the southeastern coast of the united states interacting with a trough we can see the ridge of high pressure right here to the north of the main development region that we know is responsible for sending all of the easterly trade winds across the main development region into the caribbean we can see a tropical wave right here across the eastern portion of the caribbean and the other tropical wave that the hurricane center is watching with the airflow pressure attached to it as well as the other airflow pressure right there to the east of it and if we take a look back at the visible satellite images of the atlantic before the sun went down we can see the clouds associated with that frontal system the potential tropical cyclone off frame but we already saw it on the rainbow satellite images and we can see the clouds associated with the tropical wave right here across the eastern caribbean as well as the clouds associated with the areas of low pressure and the strong tropical wave that the hurricane center is watching we'll be talking more about the rest of the caribbean today later on 
Let us focus our attention on the prediction that was made in yesterday's video about the weather across Jamaica for today, Sunday, September 8, 2024. It was stated that parts of northern and western Jamaica would have received some afternoon rainfall on Sunday. And we know northern parishes, we're talking about those parishes on top like Hanover, St. James, Chilon, St. Anne, St. Mary, Portland. While western Jamaica, we're talking about those parishes in the county of Cornwall like St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, Hanover, St. James, and Chilani. And what ended up happening? As early as 3.05 p.m., the visible satellite image was posted here on our Twitter page, Our the Jamaica. Keep in mind that these posts aren't only made here on our Twitter page, but they're also made on our Instagram page, Our the Jamaica, on our TikTok page, Our the Jamaica, and on our Facebook page, Our the Jamaica A76. So if you have one of those social media platforms, please ensure that you follow us there as we may post throughout the day that you can't afford to miss. So we saw the visible satellite image and it highlighted that we're definitely getting in on some clouds, bring overcast skies and isolated showers, even some isolated thunderstorms in there as you can see by the sparkling yellow dot. Especially across northern and western Jamaica, so definitely a section of northwestern St. Elizabeth, section of Westmoreland might have gotten in on some sprinkles. Hanover, St. James, Trelawney, St. Anne, section of Southern St. Mary at that time for sure. And if we take a look at what happened as the afternoon progressed, let's see what took place. So we definitely had those clouds across a portion of Northern Jamaica and we definitely saw the high cold cloud tops regarding the thunderstorms being blown off towards the southwest just as expected. We have the upper level winds coming in from the northeast. The cumulonimbus nimbus cloud tops were being blown off towards the southwest, bringing more and less overcast skies. The section of maybe Clarendon, Manchester section of Westmoreland for sure got another overcast skies activity. But we saw that majority of the thunderstorm activity was definitely off the north coast right there. Maybe a section of northern Saint, well, northern Saint Andrew getting in on some of the action, as well as sections of Westmoreland and Hanover for sure, just to confirm the western parishes but mostly sunny conditions elsewhere saint elizabeth manchester clarna saint Catherine, kingston saint andrew portland saint thomas for sure got in on sunny weather today definitely a good day for washing and if we take a look at the crossroads scam from c jamaica's youtube channel at about 1 38 pm we can see that it was definitely sunny and when did not much in the way of cloudy conditions or rainfall at all being experienced. By the way, if you'd like to see more live streams like this, just visit C Jamaica's YouTube channel. They show live streams of Crossroads, Halfway Tree, Barbican, the Kingston Harbor, the panoramic view of Kingston, and even the Bogwalk Gorge. And if we take a look at the latest infrared satellite images, we can see exactly what took place. The thunderstorms that lash portion of northern Jamaica today, the high cold cloud tops as represented by the blues, greens, yellows, oranges, reds that we know represent the cumulonimbus clouds. And we can also see the sparkling white dots that we know represent the lightning strikes, if not lightning flashes. Definitely, especially across Hanover for sure. They've definitely been getting in on a lot of rainfall, especially during the afternoon recently. And if we take a look at the very latest, by the way, we see that it's, it's glitched out right there at the end in the purple. Yes, the satellite images can definitely glitch out. We know these satellites out in space can definitely malfunction for sure. And we see that it's definitely malfunctioned at about five minutes past the hour. That's about what 6.05 p.m. today. Hopefully it gets is act together and you know shows us the satellite images because we don't want to be caught off guard with any storm systems coming because the satellite is down hopefully this is just a temporary thing that the noaa can fix soon if we take a look at what's happening on the cable and doppler radar images this is why we're glad that we have doppler radar because if we don't have satellite we can depend on the doppler radar images we can see some rainfall right there off to the northwest of the island. Some of the leftover clouds from today's rainfall across Hanover. Definitely still bring some isolated shower sections of the waters to the northwest of there. We see the greens, we see the yellows within those greens. They represent light to moderate rainfall for sure right there to the southeast of the Cayman Islands. As it relates to what's happening on the Guantanamo Bay radar, 
the military radar that is we don't see much happening right here there's some rainfall right there across portion of southeastern cuba on the cayman radar we can see that rainfall right there to the northwest of jamaica that we saw on the cuban doppler radars as well not much in the way of rainfall in and around the cayman islands at all but if we take a look at the latest showing on the barbican camera not much in the way of bad weather it's having issues loading because i'm still having to be depending on other persons internet hopefully flow starts out my internet soon so that everything can load in time oh there we go we can see live camera barbican not showing much in the way of bad weather at all definitely a fair night vehicles and people going about their business for sure and it should continue tonight if we take a look at the accumulated precipitation for the past 24 hours for the from the caribbean institute for meteorology and hydrology website this map does indeed paint a picture of where we had the rainfall today definitely if not across northern portion of some southern parishes like northern saint catherine northern saint andrew northern manchester and northern saint elizabeth as well as northern westmoreland definitely the rainfall was for sure across portions of hanover sections of st james sections of trelawney st anne and sections of southern st mary not much in the way of rainfall for portland at all but we know this map is not 100 percent accurate sometimes we just have to take it with a grain of salt but it does paint quite the picture of where we had the rainfall today and if we take a look at the temperatures right now we can tell about 28 degrees celsius in both montego bay and kingston and by about 4 a.m on monday temperatures should dip down to about 26 degrees celsius in montego bay 25 degrees celsius in kingston taking a look here at the temperature forecast for tomorrow this map from the gfs is showing 18 d on monday when calculated that's about 1 p.m on monday and we can see jamaica right here embedded in some orange colors that represents all the way up to three degrees celsius above normal temperatures as you can see by the key on the right three degrees celsius above normal temperatures and the normal temperatures for the month of september across jamaica are close to 90 degrees fahrenheit 90 degrees fahrenheit is about the same as 32 degrees celsius so we should be receiving anywhere from 32 to 35 degrees celsius at most for jamaica's temperature on monday given the three degrees celsius temp in temperature rise definitely gonna be hot definitely gonna be humid so please ensure that you stay hydrated drink a lot of water instead of all the drinks and the coffee if you're home you can take some cold showers you can rest more eat more fresh fruit than anything else dress down don't put on too much clothing in all of this heat if you know that you're not gonna be in a cool environment and ensure that you check on some others your neighbors whoever they may be because we know the heat can definitely do some damage especially to the elderly if we take a look here at the saharan dust forecast for 2 p.m on monday we can definitely see that we still have some bronze that represents the saharan dust across portions of the waters to the west of africa as represented by the bronze we also see a tongue of brown colors right here stretching into portions of the leeward islands but it's not enough to cause tremendous hazy skies or you know causing respiratory illnesses asthma sinusitis in some persons we're indeed grateful that for the most part majority of the atlantic jamaica right here the caribbean in the clear for the most part we're indeed grateful for that as it relates to the wave forecast for tomorrow it makes sense that the highest waves as represented by the purples and the burgundy colors should be across the southwestern gulf where we have potential tropical cyclone number six while elsewhere across the gulf of mexico and the caribbean should be getting none of those lighter shades of blues to darker shades of blues that we can see by the key on the bottom right that represents all the way up to 0 0.5 for meter wave height all the way up to 1.5 meter wave heights and that's because the winds are going to be strongest across the southwestern gulf all the way up to 25 all the way up to 40 knot winds close to the equivalent of the 50 mile per hour winds that we saw on the hurricane center site while the rest of the basin especially the caribbean getting in on those 10 to 15 to 20 knot winds and we see the general direction for these winds coming in from the east southeast across the eastern caribbean curving more westward across the central to the western caribbean and then curving more northward across the western caribbean more so from the southeast 
and as it relates to what's going to be expected across Jamaica tomorrow, we can definitely see that the air is going to be coming in from the east, curving northward, right there, maybe piling up across inland areas of some central and western parishes, right? That's on the euro, that's what the GFS is showing. Something similar. The darker blues, that's where all of the ears going to be piling up. That's where we're going to be having the least amount of wind. So it might just have those cumulus clouds becoming mid-level rain clouds, if not upper-level cumulus nimbus clouds. And with the upper-level wind still forecast on 18 Zen Monday, which is actually 1 p.m. on Monday, to come from the northeast. You can see that flow coming in from the northeast for sure, all courtesy of the upper-level high pressure that's on top of potential tropical cyclone number 6 right there just like what we saw today look back at the infrared satellite images right here we saw that when we had the thunderstorms for sure the high cold clouds were being blown off towards the south and the west that's what we're referring to when we're talking about the upper level winds and the upper level winds can definitely bring overcast skies this section of some southern parishes if not some light rainfall while the majority of the heaviest thunderstorms will be or maybe off to the north or maybe inland areas of some central western parishes or monday but let's actually confirm with what the rainfall forecast maps are showing we're actually seeing some differences with the rainfall that's expected this map from the euro and this map from the gfs are both showing where it's going to be raining across jamaica at 4 p.m eastern standard time which is actually 3 p.m jamaica time and we see the gfs showing more of the blues that represent rainfall especially across northwestern Jamaica, so maybe northern St. Elizabeth, section of Hanover, West Milan, section of St. James, Trelawney, western St. Anne, even a dot of blue right there across portions of St. Andrew. We'll see how that goes. But the year is more robust during rainfall, almost everywhere, eastern, central, western Jamaica, but we're more inclined to believe what both of them are showing. And what both of them are showing is for northwestern Jamaica. So look out for that isolated shore. Who knows? Maybe who knows? Maybe it's just more cloud cover than anything else. Maybe tomorrow is gonna be the driest day that we've had so far during the month of September. But look out for that isolated afternoon rainfall out in the northwest for sure. Let's see if the Euro actually wins showing more rainfall across central and eastern Jamaica than what the GFS was showing. Either way, both accumulated precipitation forecast maps are not that impressed. Not showing much in the way of heavy rainfall, not seeing much in the way of colors. Just all the way up to 0.2 of an inch of rainfall being predicted on the GFS from now up until 10 p.m. on Monday. Euro a bit more robust, showing all the way up to 0.3 of an inch of rainfall in the yellow across western Jamaica. We'll see how that goes. Either way, we're grateful that it's going to be raining somewhere in Jamaica tomorrow. We're in the month of September in Kingston, we usually receive almost 100 millimeters. That's almost 4 inches of rainfall during the month. In Montego Bay, we usually receive almost what, 175 millimeters of rainfall. That's almost 7 inches of rainfall. And you can visit weatherandclimate.com to find out about what your specific parish receives throughout the year in terms of rainfall. And you can use this map right here to do the calculations because you know one inch of rainfall is about the same as 25 millimeters of rainfall, so you can do the math yourself. All right, so that's it for the forecast across Jamaica. Let us focus our attention on the rest of the Caribbean. So, as stated, we still have that tropical wave doing a number on the northeastern Caribbean as we speak, even portion of the eastern Caribbean still getting in on some of the activity. So section of Hispaniola, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, the US and British Virgin Islands, Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, sections of St. Vincent and the Grenadines getting in some of the action, Martinique, Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Bart, even portion of Northern South America getting in some of the action, Guyana, Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, sections of Nicaragua. Honduras, El Salvador, sections of the Yucatan Peninsula getting in on some of that rainfall too. And if we take a look at what the Doppler radar images of the Northeastern Caribbean are showing, we can definitely see what's happening right now. We see the greens that represent some light to moderate rainfall and the yellows that represent some heavy rainfall. And heavy rainfall is definitely being experienced across portions of Martinique, Dominica, Guadeloupe. Some hit or miss isolated showers in and around 
Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Martin. Some rainfall definitely affecting sections of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Sections of the waters to the south of Puerto Rico definitely getting us some rainfall as we speak. And if we load these images from earlier, we can definitely see that they've definitely been getting you know, some heavy rainfall today across portions of Puerto Rico, especially western and central and east, southeastern portions of the island. We can also see some rainfall that was being experienced across the Leeward Islands for sure. And if we take a look at the Barbados radar, look at what's taking place. We can definitely see that rainfall that portion of Dominica and Guadeloupe are getting as we speak. Some rainfall right there to the east of Martinique. Some rainfall definitely affecting portions of Barbados as we speak. We see more coming in from the east to affect the island. Who knows, maybe some isolated flash flooding could take place. Don't see much right now across St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but it could get there later on tonight into tomorrow. Not much taking place across Trinidad and Tobago right now either. If we take a look at the weather we have Doppler radar images, we can see some rainfall across portions of Cuba, some rainfall across the Yucatan Peninsula, sections of Honduras, sections of eastern Guatemala, as well as northern Guatemala with some isolated shores. Rainfall to the east of Nicaragua, some rainfall right there across northern south america so portion of northern venezuela getting in on some of the action and that's really to where the rainfall is expected within the next 24 hours this map from the year and this map from the gfs haven't changed much it's basically showing the same places getting rainfall just like yesterday or just like today so sections of the eastern caribbean anywhere from grenada northward not seeing much happening right there across Tobago but we do see some rainfall in store maybe for section of Trinidad we see some rainfall definitely for St. Vincent sections of St. Lucia Barbados Martinique Dominica Guadeloupe Anguilla Antigua and Barbuda St. Kitts sections of St. Martin St. Bart's the US and British Virgin Islands Puerto Rico Haiti and the Dominican Republic and we see the rainfall being represented by the yellows, oranges, and reds, all the way up to an inch of rainfall being expected. So, two sections of Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula. Not much in the way of heavy rainfall at all. Not much in the way of rainfall at all for the Cayman Islands. But definitely, section of Cuba, section of the Bahamas, and section of Florida getting in on some of that rainfall. And we see that both the Euro and the GFS models are in consensus with this forecast. I know that when they're in consensus like this, the chances of it actually happening are much higher. Alright, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching.